Hi, this is Heidi, episode 83, Scarcity Mindset. Life isn't a spectator sport. Success comes to those who show up every day with a pocket full of courage, grit, and a little sparkle. I'm glad you're here. you guys doing? I'm so glad you're here, family, friends, new listeners, and those of you who have been here for 83 episodes. Make sure you are rating, reviewing, and sharing the podcast. Maybe just screenshot and share on social media and be sure to tag me so I can return some credit to you. Make sure you're subscribed also so you get the episodes automatically each week. Before I start talking scarcity, and maybe this has to do with it too. Do you guys feel done with all of this like me? I'm just done with it. This is going to air in early March 2021. I want us to move faster into our new normal. I'm done with kids doing remote school. I'm done with at least one email a week telling me that some child's missing some Zoom check-in. Last week, I got an email that one child wasn't showing their whole face on Zoom. I know everyone is so seriously doing their best, and my children's teachers have delivered a top-notch remote learning, but the emotional well-being of our youth is not being cared for, and I'm, I'm kind of done with the imbalance. And I realize I'm their mother, and I'm making it be my priority. I'm just done with the Zoom meetings that could be better in person. Okay, I know. That's a lot of complaining. But if you're wondering, if you're alone in what you're thinking, you're not. I'm hanging in there just like you. But I have been managing my thoughts and mindset about all this, and it's going to play into today's topic. I hope you're in my free Facebook group, Lose Weight and Gain Confidence with Heidi. Today, well, which I know this is going to air in a week or two, I started posting thoughts in my group that people who have lost weight and maintain the weight, thoughts that they don't think anymore. People who have lost weight don't think it's not working, or they don't think they have to eat something because other people are eating and more. Oh, it sounds like an upcoming episode should be coming about all those thoughts. Make sure you are in there and say hello to the other members in the group. Okay, today I want to talk about What is scarcity mindset? Because this mentality or this lens of seeing the world can show up in every area of our life if we aren't careful. And it really clouds and influences how we feel, how we speak, our confidence, if we ask for raises, everything. Scarcity is us thinking that there's only a finite or a set amount of things in the world. Resources, funds, money, people, anything. Have you heard of zero-sum thinking? This is very much scarcity thinking, that if I get something, it takes away from someone else. If I win, someone else loses. If I'm given a compliment, this means someone else is now knocked down a notch. If I'm given a raise, it means someone somewhere else is now going to make less money or have less opportunity. Zero-sum thinking, as you can see, is rooted in comparison. Before I give you more examples, it's good for me to remind you of default programming that our brain has, which makes scarcity very much our default lens. Our brains have a negativity bias or a lens on them to only see what's wrong on default. So you know people who are just always negative, well, their default brain is running the show and their higher brain just isn't strong enough to manage and clean up that lens. And maybe this attitude actually serves them well. We don't know. The other programming that our brain is constantly running is that it's always scanning for what is wrong. This is like the programming behind that negativity bias. So on default, if not manage, we only see scarcity. We only see how we lack compared to other people. And we may sabotage our own successes, our own happiness, because we aren't seeing the whole picture. So just before we go on, the opposite of scarcity is an abundant mindset. That's how it's often referred to. Scarcity is rooted in there isn't enough, and abundance is rooted in there is more than enough for everyone. Okay, with my clients who are trying to lose weight, we see scarcity pop up when they only focus on what they can't eat or what they might feel restricted from. So they make lists of what they can't eat, and I help them focus on 
all of the healthy things that they can eat if they choose. And also, this is very important, I help them focus on the areas of their life that will grow and expand if they make their health a priority. So instead of, oh, I'm sad I won't be able to get that blooming onion at Outback with my family, which is scarcity, it's so important to practice moving the brain to what we gain by not eating those foods, how good we feel, how much better we sleep, how many more clothes fit, our enhanced overall health if we repeatedly make good choices like that. Recently, I heard a story of a woman who had lost 100 pounds and was complaining about the loose skin on her legs, and I can commiserate if I wanted to. I have loose skin too. In fact, I was just in Aruba, and it would have been easy to focus on the flapping skin. Whatever I felt was scarce or lacking, but I made myself admire the parts of my body I really do like, allowing abundance. Our brains just default to what's wrong. So before she lost 100 pounds, she complained about her weight. And after losing, her brain on default saw that the loose skin was now the problem. So our job is to constantly ask ourselves, why am I making this a problem? Or is it even a problem? And does me fixating on this help me in any way? Or is it blocking happiness and peace? I think in many ways, we don't even feel comfortable being happy or feeling abundant. We think... If I feel good and content with my body or how much money I'm making, I won't want to work for more or to take care of what I have. But the opposite is true, y'all. When we see our lives with possibility, we end up creating so much more. Here are a few thoughts or comments that you might hear and you might say, in fact, they are a signal that you have some scarcity thinking going on. And remember, It is our default programming, so don't judge yourself on these thoughts. It's just a sign of where we need to do work. Thoughts like, I can't believe this is happening to me, or things never work out for me, or I'm not lucky, or I'll never get ahead, or life isn't fair. I remember someone saying, well, guys never liked me when I was growing up. That's the reason she would always use for why she wasn't married at that time. That thought and lens of her life left her insecure and with less possibilities than an abundant thought like, I just haven't met someone I want to marry. I coach many mothers of young adults, and we all have these very narrow definitions or visions of how we want our children's lives to go. We think we know the right way, quote, right way for them to grow up and be successful. But these blinders of the, quote, right way end up creating scarcity, worry, and criticism in ourselves. Let's say your child decides not to go to college right after high school. They're working full time because it's what they want to do. When our brains are in scarcity mode, they see only what our children aren't doing. They aren't in college or taking classes. And that scarcity then creates anxiety or fear in us. Scarcity blocks out our acknowledging and focusing on everything our child is doing right then. They're very dependable in their job. They're making money. They're maybe paying several bills. They're saving. They're showing up to work on time. They're getting work experience. They're learning customer service. They're meeting new people. Our abundant mind will see all of these things, but scarcity has us focused on what they're not doing. Now, scarcity is an emotion, and it usually shows up in our lives with us feeling stuck, closed off, selfish, blaming other people, feeling superior, hoping other people fail or have challenges, being paranoid, being suspicious, micromanaging, worrying, or always expecting bad news. Phew, a big list of emotions. And I'm guessing if you're like me, you feel one of those on the daily. Now, Listen to those emotions again. Rewind. Which one of those do you feel the most? Now, remember, our emotions come from our thoughts. All of these feelings are coming from the lens we see the world through. Nothing outside of us is blaming or being paranoid or worrying. So you want to stop and ask yourself, what exactly am I thinking right now that's making me feel this way? This is the work I do with my clients. I personally have been feeling stuck these past few weeks with my website and WordPress and needing to learn a few things to add some landing pages. I'm stuck because 
I'm in total scarcity. I'm focusing on what I don't know. Just today, I realized all the blinders I have on. And actually, this mindset is blocking me from feeling the discomfort of learning what I need to learn in the website. It's blocking the solutions and the people I can ask for help. So I've seen that. And today, I made a big list of people who can help me, all the resources that I have to help me. Suddenly, my mind isn't stuck. It'll be work, but I see possibility, not lack. Another emotion we might feel that's a road sign of scarcity is hoarding. Okay, maybe you aren't hoarding toilet paper or hoarding stacks of newspapers in your home, but do you hoard information or resources or useful information for fear someone else might succeed more if you shared that information? I remember in my first job after college, I worked with a woman who was supposed to be training me in my assistant job. She was a longtime temp. And instead of training me and sharing and helping and teaching, she would swoop in when I had a question and she would do what needed to be done and literally would hoard the useful information. I knew it was weird and she was like the opposite of a team player. Her own insecurity and scarcity over her job led her to like figuratively hunch her shoulders over the information she knew about the job and the company and she just wouldn't share. So I'm really quick to always share tools, information, anything with other people. When we give and share and live in pure generosity, y'all, we feel better, number one. And also we show the world we're willing to accept And I promise you, the universe conspires for us to have more, for others to give us more. We want to share and be generous with other people who mirror that generosity and abundance, and even if they don't. A year or so ago, I joined a networking group and mentioned to an acquaintance that I had joined this group. And their first comment was, well, how many leads have you gotten from that group? Now, this isn't an unusual business question in general, I guess, but it startled me because Well, yes, it is named a networking group. My mindset and lens wasn't on what am I getting from this group. I was very much focused on giving and contributing. And I knew with faith and just the way the world works that I'd get back much more than I gave. It made me be so grateful for the other life coaches and other professionals in my orbit. We have absolutely zero scarcity. We could not give more to each other. And I know it's like I say, our vibe attracts our tribe. Generosity attracts generosity. And we've all been wildly successful because we can't support each other enough. This comes from us all thinking there are plenty of people for us to serve. We aren't comparing. We know there's more than enough. Just like in the example of the woman at my first job, her scarcity made her want to be very independent. She was deep in thinking that there wasn't enough, or if she shared, it would take away from her pile. Abundant thinking allows us to be dependent on others, and we want to learn from others. So we all end up growing. Scarcity also shows up in our fear of change. Thinking change means we're missing something, or something was wrong with us before. Abundant thinking seeks growing and changing. Now notice the emotions we feel when we can pivot our scarcity to abundance. We feel an overall sense of expansion. We feel open, selfless, love, acceptance. We give and we receive compliments. We cheer each other on. We're grateful, excited for the future, always expecting good news. I can notice scarcity in myself and others when we hear someone else given a compliment. Maybe suddenly we feel defensiveness or we feel something good about someone else is taking away from our goodness. And there is a part of our brain, y'all, again, the programming running on default is wondering, is there something wrong with us? We just need to manage this brain by reminding it a compliment about someone else is about them. It has nothing to do with me. We see this when someone maybe takes over a job or a volunteer position of someone else. If we were in that position before and we overhear the new person being complimented or given high regards, our brain may wonder, well, are they saying I did a bad job? That is scarcity driving, y'all. The good news is compliments and goodness in the world are not a zero-sum game. We can all be good or even great at what we do. 
I can think back to times when my scarcity was driving my personality. And not only did I make compliments and goodness for others to mean something bad about me, I also then had a hard time giving compliments and adding to the praise of others. And it was all from defensiveness and protection on my part. And it's all because my confidence lens and my self-worth bucket weren't as full as they needed to be. So I want you to practice the next time you hear someone got a promotion, got a raise, got a new car, is complimented or praised for things you also do, practice making this all about them. Add to the compliments. Ask about the new car, their promotion. Their new and amazing job is not taking away from your future job opportunities. All the amazing things other people say about their children doesn't take away from the amazing things your children can do one day. As a friend shares how much weight she has lost or her new personal record at the gym, abundance is being happy for her. Scarcity feels insecure and worried you aren't good enough. Everything good that happens to others can totally happen for us if we do the work. If we open ourselves up to those good things happening and see all the possibilities around us. If you find that you're having an overall low anxiety in your life, I bet scarcity is driving your thoughts more than they need to. Anxiety often feeds off the thought or worry, oh no, everyone else is better than me. Just notice where that thinking is showing up and ask yourself, how is this not true? What am I not seeing about this situation? Scarcity and perfectionism are best friends because both of them might get a 90 on a test and they only focus on the 90% they didn't get right versus basking in the fantastic 90% they got right. Really, y'all, what we focus on expands. Where we see opportunity, we create possibility. Where we only see problems, we ignore and are blind to all the solutions right in front of us. Another scarcity mindset is our fear of missing out. I remember leaving college and wanting to move back to that town because I only focused on the good things I'd be missing by moving out of that season of my life and out of that city. Even with the fear, I did move to Boston and I'm so glad I did. If I hadn't, I would have missed out on meeting new people, my own growth, my expansion. So yes, Sometimes we do need to decide to miss some things so we can experience new and greater things in our life. And the new doesn't cancel out the great that we had in the past. One emotion that's another big road sign of scarcity is when we're holding a grudge or cannot forgive. We feel like there's only so much love to go around and we don't want to give any love to someone that we don't think is worthy. But we have it all wrong. Love is not a finite resource. We create love in our minds and our bodies. No one else creates it. So the more we can create and feel, the greater our lives are. No one else benefits from it. Forgiveness is a sign of abundance. And notice how much expansion happens in our hearts and souls when we forgive. We feel a lightness that attracts more goodness to our lives. In closing, I want to give you a few tools in addition to the thoughts that I've given you in this episode. And y'all, I get it. In some ways, it is easier said than done, but it gets so much easier as you train your brain to pivot your thoughts ever so slightly. And we're the ones that feel the benefit. First, we hear it everywhere. And honestly, it's because it works. Every night, write down three things you're grateful for. My husband has been doing this really super conscientiously for a few months, and he says how much of a difference it has made for him. I can see it too. This makes our brains focus on the abundance, even if for a few moments we ignore what's lacking. Second, when you find yourself feeling those emotions of scarcity, stop and go through all five of your senses. What are you touching that you're thankful for? Your clothes, your couch, what else? What about the air you're breathing? Or are you just thankful for maybe clean air? Pick out one thing you see that represents abundance in your life through your eyes and so on. By the time you get through all five senses, your brain will have moved out of scarcity to at least neutrality, if not abundance. Being grateful for the simple things in life is actually very profound. Third, each morning, repeat I am and follow that 
by words that you want to describe yourself and that you want to attract into your life. Our default programming is to be so negative, so we attract negativity into our lives. So practice saying to yourself, I am capable. I am a hard worker. I am creative. I am gifted. I am special. I am smart. I am smart enough to figure this out. I am resourceful. Whatever it is, our scarcity lies inside our lack of self-worth. Repeating these things will clear up our brain lens so you're looking for evidence that day of those beliefs. Now, fourth, allow your feelings of inadequacy or anxiety. See them. Don't resist them. They're human emotions and just let them pass. Don't let them sit longer than necessary. They aren't the feelings that we want driving the car. We just get to see them in the back seat. Here's the thing, when you start seeing life through abundant eyes, you start creating more opportunities for yourself. You have more creativity and see more possibility. You literally attract more goodness into your life. Several of my clients have gotten new, better paying jobs, raised their rates and more, all domino effects of increasing their confidence, managing their scarcity mindset and believing they're worth it. Okay, that's it for today. If you want to know how to use these tools to achieve your goals and to get out of your own way, sign up for a consult call at HeidiBenjaminSin.com. I have one more spot for private coaching. So sign up now if you want to come out of quarantine with a new mindset and confidence. A confident mother is the greatest gift to her family, not a perfect mother. Your family wants you to feel confident, anchored, and calm. I can help you uncover this version of yourself. Have a great week.